Hello everybody, my name everybody. is Joy and welcome back to Medieval Shorts. Now we are about to start a debate. Shit's about to go down. So I have five hearts in total. Answer each question with the correct clue to win. Oh god, I'm actually gonna have to solve it. Answering wrong will take away one of your hearts. Fail five times and it's game over and you will have to start from the save point. Remember, you can skip through text by holding the page down button. Right. Let me show you the power of an elite. Bring it on, Onion Man. Stop calling me that. Entry point. Let's start by talking about how the criminal entered the place. What about it? Isn't it obvious? The boy pushed the bookshelf which was concealing the hole in the wall and came in. What? That's it? It's true the boy entered the house, but not in the way you described it. Because he was sick, he was too physically weak to be able to do that. He entered the place with the help of this person. With her. Lily Stanford, daughter of Ray and Morticia Stanford. Did she help the boy Evans enter the place? Yes. He was obviously helped by the little Lily since it was her idea to break in in the first place. Lily, is this true? Yes, Grandpa. I was the one who opened the window and let him in. Right, okay. I thought we ascended to some sort of plane of debate, but apparently we're still standing in the same library. Just different? I don't know. But why? The both wanted to read the panda story, which you didn't tell them fully. Seriously? Your kids couldn't wait one day? Wait, hold on. What about the hole then? Isn't it obvious? It wasn't made by the boy who read... But, but the real criminal who wanted to steal the book. But... You don't have any evidence to support your theory, but I have a witness. Sorry, Onion, you lost this round. Yay, I won! Who cares how they got in? The point is the boy was in the premise when the book was stolen. Care to elaborate? The crime. When Howards came up, they both panicked. The girl ran away, but the boy pretended to run away. He went to the room where the book was hidden, broke the wall with a sledgehammer and stole it. That is one roundabout theory, but there's a major flaw in that theory again. There are many things wrong with your theory, but the major flaw is... He was physically weak. <coughs> 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 Sorry, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I'm just dying you for a second. <coughs> uh, hold on. No, hold on, hold on. Suspicious empty space. No, I think the boy is the, himself is the clue because he's too weak. What about the boy? You said it yourself. Evans is a kid who is always sick and therefore has a weak body. Do you really think he would be able to lift this heavy sledgehammer above his head and open a, smash open a wall? In that case, maybe he didn't use the sledgehammer and it was left there to confuse us. Really? Do you have any evidence to support that theory? What? This is a debate and I'm not the only one who is supposed to present evidence. Where is yours? God damn it. Sorry, Onion, you lost this rank too. Right, I'm on a roll! I hope I don't screw it up halfway and end up with innocent people in jail. This doesn't make sense. Why am I being pressurized by a newbie? Probably because you suck. Grr. The time and place. Alright, let's assume for a second that there was a second perpetrator. Then care to explain why nobody saw that person. Howitz was coming up, the kids were also present. How come no one heard anything? That's actually a good point. You see, there is no conceivable way that the criminal could have escaped if they existed. If they exited. I guess we need to find the pattern then. Let's try and guess how the robbery took place during that period. Checkpoint reached. Save the game. Yes, please. Let's start off with something we know. The crime happened at night. The place was... Dark. It was obviously dark out there. Well, that was an obvious one. Come on. Now... That the stage is set, let's see who came in first. Since no one heard the wall breaking, I'm guessing the first person to be was... The thief. The first person was the thief, because if nobody heard them. The thief must have been the first person in the scene since no one heard him making the hole and coming in. Oh, after coming in, the thief concealed the hole and directly went to the room where the book was kept. But who is that? After breaking the wall and retrieving the book, the thief drew the sledgehammer under the bookshelf and prepared to leave. However, he couldn't exit. It was due to this person showing up. Uh, Evans, Howitz, or Lily? 
Wait, who discovered them again? I think it was Lily, because they walked in. Lily was coming to let Evans inside the library. Oh, right, there we go. Yes, that's how it went. The thief's exit was now blocked, and since Evans and Lily were in the room where the hole is, he decided to sneak past them and go to the other side of the library where no one was present. However, he encountered another problem. Mr. Howitz was coming up. Could I interject for a moment? What is it? I am guessing since the kids only heard me, they assumed I was coming from the stairs. You weren't? I was getting a glass of water when I saw Lily sneaking around, so I decided to follow her quietly. However, she was a little fast for me, and I lost her when I entered the library. I assumed she went to the left side of the library and decided to catch her red-handed. So, when Lily went to the right side of the library to let Evans in, you were in the left side of the library? That's precisely it. I stumbled in the dark and yelled in pain so the kids heard me and I thought I might be coming up. I see, so when the thief tried to go to the left side, he saw you. That means both exits were locked and the only way he could go now is down the stairs. Actually, after I saw that my husband wasn't in the bed, I thought he went to meet his secret lover. So I was in the hallway below looking for him. My word, woman, I can't even get a glass of water without being suspicious. Anyway, when he screamed, I was sure that his lover stabbed him, so I ran up to him as soon as I could. Wait, that means... The thief was trapped with nowhere to go. So, the question is, where could he have hidden himself? In the chair? Behind the chair? Could it be the, hit, the thief hid himself there? It seriously can't be that the thief was hiding here all along. Are you crazy? Are you suggesting that the thief might still be hiding here? Actually, it's possible. He's behind the chair, isn't he? Drag had a similar case where the culprit was still hiding in the same room while the investigation was going. But we checked everywhere. Seems your far-fetched story has finally hit a dead end. I don't get it. What am I missing? Your supervisor is going to look so stupid when he hears about it. Wait, Officer Drag? Ever since he came in, he's been sitting on this one spot the entire time. What of it? Could it be... Yep, I knew it. I need to look carefully. My eyes! Wait, this must be... Is this the book? This is it. This is the Phoenix Reborn. Wait... Of course I'm sure, this is the Book of the Legends. I am so happy right now. You can all begin praising me now. Shut the hell up. Yes, please praise me more. Wait, if the thief hit the book there, where did the thief go? More importantly, who is the thief? I think I know who the thief is. Please tell me because I have no clue. The thief left the book behind because he knew he will be able to come back and retrieve it. That person also tried to misguide me with a clue, but now I can see the truth. What do you mean? A thief is a person who currently has no business being here, but is trying to make it their business. And the person is... I don't know. Captain Soldiers Diggs or Amber, who was... No, Amber is me. It's not me, right? It's not gonna be... Okay, um... I forgot his name. I forgot the names of the characters. Who was Dragon? Who was Diggs again? What? Are you out of your freaking mind? Why the hell do you think it's me? I have only been an officer for one day and I already realized the fact that the officers around here don't like working. Each and every one I met would rather be at home, so why the hell would you jump? Are you jumping in a case which had nothing to do with you? Good point. And he said that all his money went to his ex-wives. Isn't this obvious to solve the case and increase my rank? This is a stupid robbery case where one freaking book was stolen with no real knowledge of its value. No offense. Not taken, it's true that the book is old, but I never had its value checked, so I really don't know its value. How the hell would this small case increase your rank unless you had prior knowledge about the book? You stupid woman, you're accusing me with your flimsy supports. Do you have any evidence to support your theory? Actually, we can. Please don't drop the charges, sir. I've almost got him. I, I wasn't. So you're saying you have proof against me. Show me then. Sure. 
This clue I found was the key item that made me suspicious of you. Uh No, 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 no. Uh The sledgehammer because he had already seen it. I don't know. What? The sledgehammer? You told me you found the sledgehammer before me, right? So what? Didn't I tell you that I left it for you to discover on your own? If that really is true, then why are your clothes so clean? Ah, oh, smart one, Amber. Girl, you're on a roll. When I retrieved it, it was so dusty that my clothes got dirty, but yours are too clean. That's because I was being careful. That's not possible. It was lodged so deep below the shelf, I had to go under it to retrieve the hammer. You little... I guess that was a mistake on my part. You see, the truth is the sledgehammer was never below the shelf. I threw it there so that you couldn't solve the case. This is obviously a lie. I mean, even if you threw it there. Do you have any proof? All I did was obstruct your investigation a little. I can get out with a small fine. But alas, you tried hard. Too bad there is no way we can catch the criminal, can we? Damn it, if only there was some way. Well? Could I be allowed to speak for a moment? You both have been cutting me off mid-sentence for some time now. Really? Sorry about that. Please continue. Thank you. I just wanted to say that there is a way we can find the criminal. What? How? Are you serious, old man? Remember, when I said the book cho chooses its master, it is actually a bit more complicated than that. You see, this red cover of the book is not just for show. It is coated with a special ink that imprints itself on anyone or anything it touches. But my hands are clean, so I guess I'm innocent. If it was that easy, I don't think this case would still be going. This book has also a secret compartment that has a different ink vial in it. When one ink is mixed with the other, the ink reacts and shows a color. The color is different for each person. Mine is blue if anyone wants to know. So then, Diggs, this is your chance to prove your innocence. Just stand still. This is stupid. There's no way that's true. Then why don't you do it? It's all the proof I need to let you go. Stay away from me. Guards, would you mind? Please hold still, sir. Why are you listening to the kid? I'm a class 3 officer. I am the frickin' law. Spect resisting. Hit him a few times. Roger. Ouchie. Did you pinch him? What did you do? I will say this one last time, sir. Please hold still. My first day on the job and I'm already making a grown man cry. Grandma will be so proud of me. Go ahead, Mr. Stanford. Make my day. Don't get too cocky now, Amber. His hands there. Turning black. Do you have anything to say, Officer Diggs? Oh, he's crying. It is over. Checkpoint reached, save the game, hell yes. Okay, I don't know if I was just lucky guessing everything correctly or if there were multiple solutions. I don't know how that works. Mama, my child, everything is okay now. As the head of the family, I would I would love to apologize for the events that befen befell you. Oh no, it's alright. This was a painful experience for everyone involved. Hey Onion, I'm curious, how did you even know about the book anyway? She's asking you a question. Fine. I was out drinking my sorrows in the dance bar when this guy sits next to me and starts complaining about his wife. Who? Who else? That idiot Horwitz. He's a regular there. He was bragging to one of the hosts about the legends of the book. Honey, what's he talking about? I can explain. Explain it to the floor because that's where you'll be sleeping for the rest of your life. Honey, wait. Damn you dicks. All the men in the club agreed to never reveal each other to anyone. Yikes. We should get going too, and that the criminal is revealed, we can all go to the meeting, right? Of course. Hey you, caretaker. Yes, madam? I... I'm sorry for doubting you. Let's go, dear. Right behind you. I will go too. So, Onion, were you really all here... Were you really here all this time? Where was I supposed to go? I was trapped. I hid behind the chair until the police came and then blended in with them. Hey, he was behind the chair. If you blended in, why didn't you just leave the place? You were already outside when I met you, right? That stupid drunk captain made the guard check everyone's pockets, even me. That's why I left the book and waited. Wow, 
Even when he's drunk, he's pretty responsible with his job. Oh well, seems you had a really unlucky day. I don't know why, but ever since I touched that book, bad things started happening. The girl appeared, then Horwitz. I haven't even eaten anything since yesterday. Like I said, the book chooses its owner. When you tried to snatch it, the book simply resisted you and were cursed. Well, your bad luck doesn't just end here. You not only tried to steal something, you also broke and entered the place illegally, you obstructed an official investigation, tampered with evidence, and the worst crime of all, you blackmailed a woman to take the guilt. You're looking at two years minimum. Really? Two years? Well, at least I won't have to listen to my ex-wife screaming anymore. Take him away, boys. Two years? For all that? That seems not so much. I mean, especially for the framing part. I mean, trying to frame someone into a long-time jail sentence. Well, whatever. Grandpa, can you tell us how the story ended? Yes, tell me. Tell me about the panda. I would like to know too. Sure, why not? The panda went through a treacherous road full of false turns and thorns. But the panda said, I will not give up because when you encounter hardships on the way, you grow up a little. Ah. And finally he reached home where his mother was waiting for him. They hugged and lived happily ever after. That's so sweet. Did you enjoy the story, kids? Yes, the panda made it home. I knew he would- You really did not have time. You really didn't have the time to say those two phrases on the same night. You just really love a cliffhanger, don't you, Grandpa? Lily, come along now. Come in, Mama. Bye, Evans. We should get going, too. Bye. Okay, then. All is good book is closed, case solved. I'm glad everything turned out alright in the end. That story was great, too. They looked so happy. That, that I couldn't dare tell them that the panda loses his front leg in the journey. Uh, oh, you didn't know? The panda loses one of his legs in the journey and limps back home. Really? Miss Amber, are you okay? Miss Amber, calm down, it's just a story. Why? Damn you, author. Wasn't this supposed to be a book for kids? Well... Oh dear, this was unexpected. Miss Amber, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were that invested in the story. Well, he just lost his leg, I mean, he didn't die, right? He didn't bleed out to death right before meeting his family. Well, will it calm you down if he showed you the trick of the book? He showed it too, so your hands will show a color. Okay, great. Just bring your hands up front and I will apply the ink. My eyes. It's, it's glowing. Is that normal? I can barely see anything. It seems the book was going to leave this family today anyway. Mrs. Stanford? Ah, didn't I say that the book chooses, it, chooses its master? The master of the book is the person who glows when exposed to the inks. Does that mean... Miss Emberheart, you are the true owner of Phoenix Reborn. I hope you will take care of it the same way my ancestors did. Wait, I can't accept this, not after all that happened. Who knows, maybe the book made it happen to reach you. I'm glad it was through me that the book has finally found its home. But still... Miss Hart, you will do fine. I've seen what you are capable of, I know you will put this book to good use. I do have one request. Phoenix Reborn is the title of the cover only. I will be at peace if I know the true name of the book. Could you open it now and read me the true name? Okay. Ah, here it is. The name of the book is... Pariman Vavidat. Vavivat. Pariman Vadvivat Swargya Pari. How peculiar. It doesn't sound like English to me. I may have to research it. Are you sure you want me to take it? Of course. Just promise me this, when you discover its contents, if possible, could you tell me about it? Of course. Thank you, Miss Hart. Final checkpoint. Save the game? Yes. Oh, it's the final checkpoint? So, it was the butler all along. Were you even listening to anything I said? I was passed out all this time. I don't care. Anyway, it's pretty late now and I'm pretty sure Grimms has calmed down by now. So, we'll, I will be heading home now. You should go, since tomorrow is another dreadful day. Thanks for the confidence. Let's meet tomorrow at the bar like always, Drag. Ah, <sighs> this has been a long day. I can't wait to go home have some dinner. Can I come too? Grandma doesn't like drunk people. She beat one almost to death just because she winked at me. In that case, careful on your way home, madam. Ugh. Pariman Vavida. 
Pariman vad vi vad svargya pari. I wonder what it means. Wait, madam, I know what that means. I have a minor in foreign language. She can't hear me. Oh well, she will find out sooner or later anyway. The name. I'm not gonna tell me, are you? Dimensional debate. Angel of heaven. Dimensional debate. Angel of heaven. Oh, was that is? Oh, oh, that's that was it. Okay. Medieval shorts. My best first worst day. The end. Next episode. My new best friends. You can support the series by going in the home screen and clicking on the credits link and rate the game. Okay, I will do that. And if you play this game for yourself, please do that as well. I would love to support this developer. Give him some love on his game jewel page. Because I really, really like how this game has been put together. Is there anything else? No? Okay, then let's go here. Uh, okay. You can support it by supporting me on Patreon, rating the game on Game Jolt, liking my Facebook page. Click here. Okay, so I will leave links to where this is going down in the description as well, so you can find it more easily. Go ahead and give this uh, this developer some love. I'm already liking it, and um, this developer has a bunch of more other games, so I I think I'll be playing at least a few of them just to see what's uh, going on, because this game was a spin-off from another game that he made previously. So I'll definitely be taking a look at what exactly this is a spin-off. Off, if that's a phrase. Anyway, so anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will leave a bunch of links down in the description if you want to play this game for yourself, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!